Welcome to the Human Being Unleashed podcast, where we redefine, realign, and reimagine what it means to be human so that you can live a life with the health, wealth, and relationships that are inherently yours. And we back with another episode of the Human Being Unleashed podcast. What's going on, everybody? Happy Friday or whatever day of the week it is for you. I am excited for this episode. I know I say that every time, but I mean, it's like a genuine feeling. So deal with it. All right. But I am super excited to bring through this episode with a great, great friend of mine. Uh, first and foremost, he is a good friend of mine. We have grown um, a lot closer in a shorter in a short amount of time. Um, and he is a mindset coach, uh, by the name of Alan Muellinger, by the way, I don't know what that uh, was. I was like trying to say his name, but then I like stumbled, <laughs> but by the name of Alan Muellinger. And today he is going to talk about the relationship in between energy and effort and why efforting your way through life is the last thing you want to do. And he gives us three steps on how to claim massive levels of energy so we know how to live instead. Sit back, relax, and enjoy, because trust me, this is a good one. I was having a interesting conversation with a good friend, client of mine, and we were at a coffee restaurant a couple of weeks ago. And we were having a conversation and this man that you guys are about to hear just started blowing my mind with some concepts that are very simple, but profound, I guess we could say. And it was doing a lot for me. And while I was sitting there getting all of this value, I was like, why is my mic not recording? Because this would be the best freaking podcast episode ever. And so I invited uh, my good friend, Alan, here to come ahead, to go ahead and jump on this podcast with us. So you can um, basically add significant value to your life. So I'm really excited about this. So Alan, thanks a lot for coming here today, man. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to chat with me. Yeah, absolutely, man. I'm really happy to be here. And I appreciate you inviting me to speak with you and to be able to talk to your audience, man. It's amazing. Absolutely, man. You brought back value to my life and my entire goal is bringing value to my audience. So this is this is it, man. So let's go ahead and let's start here, Adam. Um, well, first off, tell because I one of the best ways I believe we learn is through story. Right. So what I would love for you to do is actually share with us what you're currently doing and how you got into that space. And then that will open up the um, world of questions that we have. Sure, so what I'm doing right now is, is a lot of, I would say like purpose or mindset coaching and you could throw into that bucket. Um, but if I had to throw you know, the marketable term of what it is that I do, I help orient people more towards what they're here to do and why they're here to do it. Um, and that honestly started with my own journey of trying to figure that out for myself for years. Mm-hmm. Um, I was somebody who was, I would say like I was neck deep in the personal growth industry for about eight years. And it was that in the beginning, I had lots of momentum. You go to some kind of an event and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm I'm so fired up. I know what I'm going to do with my life. This is amazing. Ah." And then um, of course, after about three months or so, then the momentum would wear off. And I was like, oh, wow, I think I really need a something. What else do I need? I need a coach. So then I'll go get a coach. And then all of a sudden the coach would come in and I'd have some more momentum. I'd have some more clarity. I'm like, Oh, this is so great. I've got this coach. Everything's going to be fine. And then about three months in the novelty wears off. And then all of a sudden every conversation becomes the same. We're just talking about what are your wins and celebrations? What are your action steps? And it was just kind of very bland. I was like, wow, Paul, man, maybe I just need a program. Maybe I just need some kind of a program. Somebody's, somebody's mastermind, someone's program. And so I was constantly in this space where I was going from, yeah, from event to event, program to program, coach to coach. And it was this constant up and down cycle. And for me, I didn't realize what I was looking for was purpose. I didn't realize what I was looking for was really, if I really want to boil it down and it'll be the theme of what I talk about here is really what I was looking for was energy at the end of the day. Um, and I was constantly chasing that energy and it would come in forms of excitement, euphoria, you know, breakthrough or whatever. But the bottom line was it was this constant roller coaster of up, down, up, down, up, down, where I was completely dependent 
on the personal growth industry and I wasn't creating any momentum for myself. Okay, and, one question here. One question. Yeah. I don't want to interrupt, but I got a question. And I think it's good for the audience to clarify. Yeah. Looking for energy. Yeah. To me, I'm like, well, energy is literally everywhere. What, what do you mean you're looking for energy? You are energy. What, what exactly do you mean by saying you were looking for energy? Yeah. So all of us, we have, there's a relationship with energy that I think a lot of people really get backwards. And ultimately, the way that we can know if we are energized or not, if we have energy versus if we don't um, in a particular situation is actually by looking at how much effort something takes. Hmm. And so if something, if you're doing something, if you're going throughout your day and your day is having a lot of effort, like it's challenging, you have to force yourself, convince yourself, get yourself out of bed, like, oh my God, or like writing emails is a challenge or doing something is a challenge. That means there's no energy there. There isn't energy. We are, yeah, we're energetic beings. That's true. We are, we are half God, half being, you know, we're, the, we're, the, we're that whole thing. I love it. But but the energy side of things, the reality is when there is massive levels of energy, there is no effort. So the question I can ask you and I can ask your audience as well is, I'll just actually ask it directly to you. Can you remember a time in your past, or maybe many times in your past, Adrian, where you were doing a lot, you were accomplishing a lot, you were making shit happen, and it was completely effortless. You were in flow. It wasn't requiring any, any effort from you. It was just happening. Can you recall times like that in your past? Yeah, totally. So for the audience, I want y'all to think about this. Like he's asking me, but he's also asking you. So think about that time for yourself. Mm -hmm. But for me, it would be the moment I broke through my very first sale. Like, because when I started fitness coaching and doing high ticket sales, it was like 20. And I remember, because I marked it down, it was 23 no's. And then my 24th call, I got a yes. And um, at the moment I got that, yes. So it took a lot of effort. We can say there's a lot of effort until that point. But the moment I got that, yes, $10,000 a month, $20,000 a month, 30, 40, it like immediately started skyrocketing. And I was working a lot. Like I was doing a lot. I was doing a lot of hours, but it felt like the easiest thing I've ever done in my life to the point where I was feeling guilty for making so much money. Cause I was like, I'm not really this is really, really easy. So it was definitely the start of my fitness career online when it like quickly took off. And that lasted for about 18 months of very big wins with very, um, like it didn't feel taxing on me to do so. Totally. And that, it, and the reason being is at that time, what was happening in that space of your journey, you were completely hundred percent in alignment with your, what I'll call your purpose journey that you were doing something at that time that was completely 100% connected and necessary for the greater journey that you're meant to go on on this planet. And so as a result of that, the universe was awarding massive levels of energy. Energy gets awarded by the universe to those who are here to make a massive impact. And there was something about that time in your life where quite literally you, the, the universe, you, something somewhere new, what Adrian's doing right now, is going to make a massive, massive impact on his ability to make an impact and then inflows mm. the energy. So that's what I mean by energy. And that it's really tough. Because, real quick, because that did put me on the path that I am on now, which is a much bigger impact oriented path than that. So I can see that. Totally. Well, you were and like, think about it too. It's like you started to see bigger numbers likely than you had ever seen in the past. So your mind went from thinking, you know, whatever, whatever it is your beginnings came from, you were able to start seeing, oh my gosh, expansion is possible. That's a really big freaking deal for someone who's here to make an impact. Mm -hmm. That changes everything. When you start to see expansion is possible, like all of a sudden you, you stop thinking, oh, I want to reach a hundred people today. And you start going, I want to reach, no, screw that. I want to reach a hundred thousand people today. You, the, the whole thing changes. Mm -hmm. So it was all falling into you. And I think what's really important to understand in this concept of energy is that I think one of the biggest we'll call it disservices that the personal growth industry has done is they've married effort and energy together. Mm. They, it's like, in order to have all this energy, you got to put through all this effort, make your move. Say, and I, by the way, I love, I love Tony Robbins to death. He's, he's, he's one of my, one of my, he's where I got started really in, in all this personal growth work that I've done. And a lot of people have to start with him as well, but it's like, there's this idea, there's this perpetuation of like, if you're going to have massive levels of energy, you got to move your body, eat the right things. You have to do all this crazy stuff. And it's like, no, you don't. It's actually Very intense. <laughs> totally, totally. 
But the reality is massive levels of energy is effortless. You don't, it doesn't require Ooh. effort to attain that energy. It's not necessary. It's a lie. And it falls in line with our relationship with money. Like so many people, I have to work hard to have money. Money doesn't grow on trees. Money is challenging, right? It's all in the same paradigm. We believe that money, that energy is the thing that's, is this thing that's impossible for us to acquire or that it's very, very hard to acquire. And that's just simply not true. Mm. So when you say uh, the personal growth, married effort and energy, and that feels like one of the biggest disservices to people. What does that actually look like in somebody's life, right? Like when they're marrying effort and energy, how does that show up? Can you give us a few examples? Totally. Uh, two and a half hour morning routines. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, no shit. Yeah. Two and a half hour morning routines, three hour evening routines, um, being, uh, you know, feeling like, what else, what else have I seen it look like? Um, if I can be really real with you, it also looks like people doing things that they really hate doing. Like I, I want to, I'll share this with you. I just had a conversation with a CEO yesterday that they, uh, by the end of their call, they made the powerful decision. That I am stepping down as CEO because they realized that the company they had built, the environment they wow. had created, this thing that they were doing was not aligned with them. The whole thing was not what they were meant to be doing. So when, what that looks like in everyday life, it looks like you know us trying to force ourselves into energy, force ourselves into happiness, but also it can look like a completely inauthentic landscape of your entire life. Working mm. for a company that you don't wanna be working for, um, starting a company that you, for a reason that wasn't yours, maybe you were trying to prove it to somebody else or trying to prove mm. that you could do something rather than serve your clients, or maybe, um, it's honestly being with the wrong person or being with the wrong friend group. Like it can look like a whole bunch of things. Um, is but the reality is if there's any pain or effort in, in the day-to-day experience of things, then yeah. That's how what, do that's how do you define like. how do you define effort in this context or just overall? Yeah, that's a great question. I you know it's and that's that's actually a tough question for me to answer because for at this point, I just feel if something's effort, if something has a lot of effort, um, I would say like example, uh, <laughs> if at this point, if there's a task or a thing that I want to do or that I'm doing and the whole time I'm doing it, I can just feel my body saying, nope, 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 mm. nope, nope. The whole time that's effort to me. Like, so like it has a physical tax, like you can feel it physically. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're, it's, it's like, you're forcing yourself. Mm-hmm. Like I would, and, and by the way, I'm very kinesthetic. So I, I receive energy or information I receive from my body feel. So every, some people are different. Some people are visual. Some people are auditory, but essentially if, if you're, if you're hearing, experiencing this constant experience of no, 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 this sucks, this sucks. No, no, no. I don't want to do it or this is really hard, whatever. If you experience that while you're doing something, that's what I'm talking about effort. Because ultimately, mm. if, you're, if you're orienting yourself towards purpose, if you're ori- orienting yourself towards energy, everything you're doing in that direction should be a big yes, yes, yes. If the whole body gets enrolled, everything gets enrolled. Ah, okay. So the converse, the yeah, we can talk about the pain, but really like when you tap into the, to what it is you're meant to do, when you tap into that impact you're going to create or the, or the activity that's on the way, like I'll ask you another question. This is also a question for the audience is have you ever uh, been doing a particular activity or doing something and maybe you intended to do it for 15 minutes or 20 minutes. And then you ended up doing it for an hour, two hours, three hours. Cause you were so fired up about it. Yep. Yes. That, I, I've experienced that was uh, specifically with, uh, pitching podcasts my very first time when I started getting like my voice out there through podcast guessing and stuff. I didn't put on my put it on my calendar for 90 minutes and like four hours later I had like 15 podcasts like I did pitches to and it was just I was having a lot of fun to the point where I was like I'm gonna just keep doing this. <laughs> yeah and for did you when you were when you were doing it did you know what you were going to create when you felt that energy? I had like an with, idea with crystal clarity, not crystal clarity. I had an idea. Oh yeah. 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 I was clear in the terms of, okay, this is going to um, get my voice out there and like bring me mm-hmm. clients. 
But like in the moment, honestly, like that kind of wasn't like, a, like the results ended up being very good, like high conversion rate on getting on shows and high conversion yeah. rate with getting clients. The yeah. results showed very well. But I would I will say I was clear going into it, but actually as I reflect in the midst of it, like while I was doing it, like that wasn't really something I was focused on. It was just doing what I was yeah. doing. Does that make sense? It totally makes sense. Did you did you have crystal clarity on when it was all going to come together? No, not that. Did you have clarity on how you were going to do all the podcasts and how it was all going to go down? No, I just had clarity on the podcast I was pitching, but I had no idea how like the actual conversations are going to look. <laughs> exactly. So this is important. This is a really important distinction. The what's, the when's, and the how's. When we feel massive levels of energy call to purpose, you're, there's, a, there's a desire to move forward. And all of a sudden, we stop caring about the what's, the when's, and the how's. Mm, that's literally what happened. Yeah. I yeah. had it all if in my mind until I started doing it and then just <laughs> didn't really yes. care about it while I was doing it. Totally. And that's the thing that, and, and by the way, the what's the wins and the hows, all that is is our, just our relationship with certainty. It's our desire to be certain about something. And so if we find ourselves at any given time really hyper obsessed with what's, when's, and how's, what we're really obsessed with is certainty, which ultimately we're just obsessed with the past. We're obsessed with, okay, what in the past, how can I predict the future based off of what has happened in the past, i.e. how can I create some kind of physical tangible, predictable thing in my head that I can walk towards. The challenge when we get really obsessed with that, when we get really obsessed with trying to create the future from the image of the past, there is no energy there. It's very challenging. It's very, we, we start to think about all the things we haven't done, all the results we've had before. Because if you think about it, if you try to build the future, from an image of the past, the future is never going to look different than the past. It's just going to look the same. It's going to be more and more of the same thing, or maybe slightly changes here and there. Hmm. That magic zone of progress, that magic zone of impact is where you've claimed so much energy, so much excitement, whatever you want to call it, that you're like, I don't care what, I don't care how, I don't care when, I don't care any of that stuff. I'm just going to start taking action. What you're tapping into in that moment is you're tapping into creating the future from the future is there anything tangible about the future adrian yes or no no not at all is there anything physical about the future yes or no 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 so if you're going to try to attune to that move in that direction create something in the future that's never been created before which ultimately for the users on this podcast that's what you're here to do you wouldn't be you wouldn't be listening to this podcast with adrian you wouldn't be tuning in so consistently if you weren't here to make a massive difference and so for you to make a difference, it means you have to do something different. <laughs> you have to do something new. You have to do something that's never been done before. And in order to do that, you can't base it off the past. It has to be based off of that forward momentum, that feeling of, I don't know how, what, when, I'm just going to do it. That space, that is the purpose line. That is where you are tapping into universal source, universal energy, and stuff just starts to happen. Growth begins to happen. The breakthroughs start to happen. But more importantly, which is for me, the biggest thing that changed my life is that instead of being fueled by some external source, by some coach, by some program, by some event, by some something out there that someone's trying to sell you the date that you got to have, you start becoming self-fueled. You start becoming self-informed. You stop caring about, oh, what is this expert saying? That expert saying, I got to do the right thing in order to get the right result. No, listen to that internal muscle that's guiding you forward. And all of a sudden things begin to come together. I know I just went through a lot of so stuff. Hard. Just hmm? Why do you, um, uh, I want you to finish what you were saying, but why the heck do you think it's so hard for people to listen to their, their self, like they're like being driven by their own ideas. Like, but I mean, cause I'm not going to lie. That's something, you know, I struggle with, um, you know, even building Zamio, uh, a lot of it is, I'm building it a lot of, you know, what I'm learning from other startup founders and stuff. And I do have, I do have feelings where I'm like, maybe I should do this, but I'm like, ah, oh, but it doesn't like, that's not what like these people said, you know? So why do you think yeah. it's so difficult? Because it, it really just comes down to the fact that we just desire certainty. That's it. It's, so it's a relationship. How create certainty in something that we've never seen or something that we haven't experienced? Yes. Because it's wait, real changing. Quick, real quick, yeah. it sounds like creating certainty in something we haven't seen 
it's a better alternative than depending on the tangible path for certainty. Without question. So to, we have to, we have to first understand that certainty is a human need. You can't just get rid of certainty. Just so it, it's it. okay. Right. That's not a thing. So it's not about trying to divorce your need for certainty. That's never going to work. It's instead about learning to um, be certain about a different thing. So well, changing your relationship with certainty, like you started. Correct. With. Correct. So instead of being uh, like, I got to be certain about physical things. I got to know what it looks like, what it tastes like. Like the most annoying thing in the world to me is when someone says, I'm going to manifest a million dollars by envisioning a million dollar check coming into my bank account every single day, 13 times a week. Like I just don't, it's not, that's not real because every single image of a check that you've seen is from the past. Wow. You can't, oh. you can't try and, and, and build something in the future from the, it's not gonna work. So Huh. In in this in this situation, it's not about trying to attach your focus to physical things, your certainty and physical features, physical pictures, facts, etc. It's about instead attaching your certainty to the to that experience, that pull, that feeling, trusting yourself, trusting that internal engine. At the end of the day, it's the difference between listening to your head. This is going to sound so lame and so cliche, and I just wanted I want to frame this up because when I say this, people are going to go up. Oh, Stupid. I've heard that before, but it's true. <laughs> it's true. It's the difference between being obsessed with and listening to your head for all the answers and instead listening to your heart, allowing mm. feeling to become your source of certainty. I was about to say, elaborate on what you mean by listening to your heart, because like that is a very cliche saying. And so totally. I want to make sure that they're clear on that. Yeah, it's it's the you have to learn to be certain about the feelings and to and exa is an example. I'll give you a, like a tangible example here. Um, the other day, uh, yeah, this is a real, this is a real example. Uh, the other day I was uh, talking to my girlfriend and we were getting into a conversation where, you know, how, like sometimes when, when two, when two people are growing together, mm -hmm. there are sometimes there are, there are painful things in each other's spaces that if you activate it, you can get into reaction. It creates uncertainty in the space. Mm -hmm. So that happened where basically we had a conversation and it activated some pieces of us that were hurting still that we needed to resolve and work on and all that stuff. And it created uncertainty in the space. And all of a sudden, it, for me as a masculine force, I'm here to create certainty, create safety in the space. And all of a sudden I'm uncertain. And for me, it's like, I refuse to do that. I'm here to create safety. I'm here to create that, that space where there is, there is, everything is okay inside the space, that safe bubble. I'm here to create that. And as I'm sitting here trying to create that and I'm in reaction, I'm in a low energy place. And I'm, you know, thinking about all this stuff. I'm like, okay, what's the right thing to say at the right time? And what have I said in the past? And, and how did I, and I was, I was going deep into like, like trying to rehearse what to say, what's the right thing. What is she thinking? How can I predict based off our past conversations? How can I predict what she's feeling and what she's going through and how to say the right thing at the right time? It was all based off the past. And at some point, I caught myself and I saw myself going in that, in that hamster wheel, desiring certainty in the physical things, in the words I'm going to say, in the whatever. And I was like, stop, 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 stop. That's not going to work. So I completely changed my state. And when I say change my state, what I mean is just like I calmed down. And I began to, instead of desiring certainty in the physical words I was going to say, memories that we had, things she said to me in the past, things that I've said in the past, all that stuff, instead of attaching to all of that, I was like, what do what like I, I started to attune to my, my, my heart. And I was like, what does it feel like? Like, do I have trust in myself that I can create safety in this relationship? Do I have, do I have trust in myself that I can create it, that it will be created? And the answer in my head was yes. And then I asked myself the questions out loud in my head. Do I know how I'm going to do it? Nope. Do I know what I'm going to say? Nope. Do I know when it's going to happen? Nope. Is that okay? Yes. I asked myself mm. the question then, do I need to know those things? No. It was a quick, just little, little conversation in my head. Do I need to know that information to be able to crush this? Do I need to know that information to attune to what it is that I need to do in this situation? No, I don't. I just need to step forward with my truth, step forward with my passion, step forward with my love for this person, for this woman. And in the moment, I showed up not with me having this whole planned out speech 
which by the way, I feel like, I feel like this is, I feel like I'm talking to a lot of the men in space right now, like the amount of times that we try to plan this massive speech, <laughs> to oh, try yeah. to like, I've been you know, there. or, or and, and girls too, it, it, both, both times where we try, we do it. Okay. I just got to plan this thing out perfectly. I know my partner really well and whatever. So instead of showing up with this planned speech, which by the way, I had done a hundred times before because I'm human, we're all human. I was like, no, I'm just going to show up and say it is what I know about. Instead of trying to predict everything she's feeling, I'm just going to declare and say what I am feeling and what I know to be true. That's it. And I did. And I mm -hmm. went to her and I said, and I, I, the words I said to her were something along the lines of, and I'm going back to the past, so the energy is going to drop a bit. But what I said was something along the lines of, I don't care what happens in our, in our space together. I know that you are everything to me. I know that no matter if, if you're going through, whatever you're going through doesn't matter. I know that you're everything, period. And I will do anything for you. I am, I am completely 100% in surrender and in worship of you. That was something of that nature is what I said. Mm -hmm. And from there, the conversation wow. was great. Because again, I wasn't trying to create that conversation by basing off past information. I was trying to create that conversation based off of just what you were feeling in that moment. Yeah. And what do I know to be true? Like, what do I know to be true in my heart? And, and detaching from physical things. So that was kind of a- Oh, will, no, that makes sense though. What you know to be true in your heart. In other words, that's you finding certainty, not in a situation or a person, you finding certainty in that feeling that you were feeling and leading off of that is what I'm hearing. That's correct. So you're- um, That clicked, that clicked, that got, I got yes. it. And by the way, I know that was a foggy example because I was creating it here right on the spot, but to, but to wrap it all with a bow at the end, it's that whole thing is you're detaching your certainty from physical things and you're attaching your certainty to the feelings you have in your body. That's it. And, and those, those are feelings, real. Those are certain. Like those. Totally. Totally. Oh. But it, it's just, it's just, it's just changing your focus. It's just reorienting yourself. And I will have to be clear. It's a muscle. Like the amount of times that in the beginning, when I was doing this, I was doing it by accident. I wasn't doing it on purpose. Like now I've trained my body. I've trained myself. I've trained my awareness. So I can quick create that orientation quickly. But in the beginning, the amount of times that I wanted to go back and focus on the past physical things, practice what I was going to say, the amount of times that I've tried to practice what I was going to say out loud before I said something was insane. I used to be that person who in the kitchen, in the car, didn't matter where it was. I'd practice stuff all the time. I'd say the whole thing. And what was funny was the amount of times that when I got to the thing, I never said what I had practiced. <laughs> it never turned out that way. And it's because again, information based off the past just doesn't work. So mm -hmm. it's about, it's about attaching the certainty to your feeling. Okay, got it. Now, I think as we get closer to the end here, I want to share, well, I want to ask you, how can somebody create that level of energy about the future? Because as somebody who's like a big planner, right? As somebody who plans out, and by the way, it's so funny. I had, we had this entire plan for how Zamio was going to go when we launched it. Maybe like 1% of that happened. <laughs> like everything just like changed and different stuff happened. But as somebody who likes to plan for the future and think about my vision, how do I gain energy about yeah. that vision without being so attached to building it from the past? Because I feel like I'm yes. maybe even doing that right now. So we can use me as an example um, to work through this. But uh, how would somebody do that? Just going to go ahead and take a very quick break to say thank you so much for listening to this show every single week. I truly, truly, truly appreciate it. And if you want to help us help more people, go ahead and smash that review. I mean, that subscribe button. Hit it, hit me with a review if you haven't yet, and go ahead and share this with somebody that you feel like can really benefit from this. And of course, leave a rating, whatever rating you feel like this podcast deserves. But what this does is this helps us gain more visibility and at the end of the day, help more people. So thank you so much for listening to the show. And now let's get back to the episode. Yeah, I'm going to give you, so I wanted to make sure I came fully prepared for this, uh, this time with you, man, to make sure that your audience got the most out of this. There's, there's more nuances. And what I will share is that to claim as much energy as you possibly can, it is a deeply intimate personal thing, meaning that everybody has an energetic signature. Every single person has a specific thing that they are just pulled towards. Okay. And 
So just know that it's deeply intimate and personal and there are themes to it that I want to share. What I've identified is three really big um, things that you need to claim massive levels of energy. And these are tangible. These are things you can write down. These are things that we can define. Good. <laughs> got my yeah. pen ready. Yeah. So the first thing, and it's, this is usually the easiest, or we'll, we'll go to the first one. And this is the one that's, I would say, depending on where someone is in their journey, orienting themselves towards purpose will uh, create how specific or how broad this becomes. Okay. And to give you an, just so I can prime everybody and frame everyone in the right way, is that this first thing that I'm going to share, it doesn't need to be specific. Your answer doesn't need to be specific. Your answer doesn't need to be, oh, why the reason I'm here on this planet is to, it doesn't have to be this whole thing. And there's nothing wrong with it being broad. I've had, I, with this first piece that I've shared, I've had people say things like, um, I've had them answer something so specific on, on what they want to bring to this world. But then I've also had someone say, I just want to love people. I just want to be a source of love. That's fine. Whatever yeah. resonates with you the most. So the first piece that it takes to be able to claim massive levels of energy is what I call knowing your shift, knowing the shift that you like to bring in others, the shift that you like to create in people's hearts, in their minds, the ahas, the whatever it is, that thing that when you are doing, when you're speaking, when you're in flow and you watch someone's face light up, you watch their body language change, you feel the energy be completely different in the space with you and that person, there's a, ultimately there's a shift that happened in their life, an impact you created on that particular person. Maybe they went from this belief of, I'm capable of nothing to I'm unlimited in my, in my capabilities. Maybe their shift was I'm meant to be poor forever. Now they're like, Oh my God, I'm meant to be a millionaire. Maybe the shift is uh, I've never felt a safe space in my life. And now all of a sudden like, I feel what it feels like to feel safe for the first time. This is amazing. This is what it's like to feel safe. Holy shit, whatever. But the first thing is to be aware that and conscious. Me. That one just yeah. Me. Yeah. And it's like, and so it really, it's the first thing is awareness of the shift that you like to create. How do you find the shift? How do you make sure that you get the right one? Whatever. I want to be really clear. Again, the whole theme of this is to detach from the physical and to orient yourself towards the metaphysical, towards the energy, towards the feelings. So the shift you create doesn't need to be this like thing that you put on a bumper sticker or a mission statement. Like I help people do X, Y, Z. That's not what I'm talking about. Okay. It needs to be what I, what I would encourage your listeners to orient themselves towards is following the feelings they get following like a big thing I, I say with my clients is follow the feelings, follow the feelings, follow the feelings, imagining the moments in your life where you felt totally lit up and excited and love connected, whatever it was with another human being after creating a shift with somebody. So for myself, I'll give a fast story of like where a piece of mine came along my journey. Cause the more you orient yourselves towards purpose, in the beginning, in the beginning, it'll be more general. And the more and more that you do it, the more specific it becomes. Mm. In the very beginning, I remember I was running a, I was working for a sales company where the whole point was to sell as, as much product as possible. That makes, you know, obviously makes sense. And um, I ended up being one of the top managers for that summer, for that year. We blew out of the water. The average uh, rep in my office sold three times more than other reps in the nation. And so uh, I gave a talk at this big event, but after the talk, we did these round tables where people could come up and ask questions. And I was getting questions left and right about stuff that I didn't give a shit about, which was like, you know, how do I sell more stuff? How do I raise my average order? And how do I, how do I get more referrals? And I was like, okay, yeah, yeah, whatever, whatever, whatever. But then there was someone who came up who they were incredibly timid, quiet, kind of shy. And I could just tell he had something on his mind. I could tell he had a big question. And so he comes up to the table and he looked like he was just like, so scared. He wasn't going to ask his question. I eventually threw my arms out and I was like, everyone stop talking. I pointed right at him. And I said, you, I was like, what is your name? He's like, my name is Tyler. I said, Tyler, I'm Alan. Nice to meet you. How can I help you? And he, he was really surprised, kind of shocked because I get very intense and he was like, Oh yeah. Uh, um, yeah. So I just have one question. He goes, how are you so positive all the time? And in that moment, my whole body lit up, whole body lit up because he wasn't asking, how am I so positive all the time? Two things happened in his space. What he was actually asking was how can I be that positive? Yep. That was the first thing he was asking. The second thing that happened in his space, which was a piece of my purpose 
the bar for how much happiness he thought he was going to be capable of having in his life was down here. But when he saw me as an example, all of a sudden that bar of what is possible in his life for how much he could have was completely changed. For me, bring, and I was like, oh my God, I was like bringing people awareness of what's possible, what, what, what mm-hmm. expanding what they believe they can do that makes beyond sense. their awareness, that lights me up. So that particular feeling, remembering what it felt like to create that in a human, that was a big piece of, and it's now today, it's one of the things <laughs> that I get really fired up about. There's much more that I get fired up about in a much more specific sense. But I remember that moment, not because I, I, I try to think of the physical moment. I remember that moment because I think of the feeling I had, the feeling he had. I, I remember all the emotions that occurred that all of a sudden gave me this massive burst of energy and purpose. So that's the shift. That's number one. Uh, okay. How, yeah. Beautiful. How are we doing on time? Sense. Yeah, that, no, we're good on time. We're good on time. That, that story was very clear, though. That, that made it click for me. So thank you. We're good Perfect. on time. You're Keep welcome. Going. Good, good. So that's knowing your shift, whatever shift it is you're here to create and find, and to find that, to wrap it in with a bow is follow the feelings of the times where you have felt most connected, passionate uh, with what you've changed in another human, what you helped them realize, what you helped them come to, what awareness you created in them that they previously did not have something of that nature. Okay. Mm-hmm. The second piece is method. What is your method is, is becoming aware, creating awareness around your method of delivering that shift. Okay. Because all of us, we deliver our shifts to people in various, in in different ways. You know, for me, it can be speaking, it can be one-on-one coaching, but for me, what I think about, we have, so we, have, we have tons of different methods. What I want to get clear on is the method that fires me up the most, the method that gets me totally lit up and getting present to that and feeling it happening over and over and over again. The method for me that lights me up more than anything is group space, group experience. So when I want to claim energy, I can sit here and I can envision myself, I can feel into the future and go, okay, I can either feel myself creating my shift with one person in a one-on-one environment, or I can feel the presence of a thousand people intimately, deeply experiencing the shift I give them that all of a sudden it clicks for the whole room and the room explodes with energy that fires me up. So getting clear on your method, your core method of getting excited to be able to deliver to somebody. And that you just, you just ask yourself, Hey, I I deliver my, my shift in a lot of different ways. What's the way that gets me the most fired up? And we're talking right. about not just like mentally you get psyched out, but what gives me a somatic bodily experience of like aliveness? Yes. And you're like, <laughs> just like you just feel the whole thing. Okay. Mm. That's, that's number two. The third piece, the third piece is presence to impact. Presence to impact. In other words, creating awareness around how wide and how deep your impact actually is when you deliver your shift with your method. I like this. Okay. So for me, as an example, if I begin to focus myself, if I begin to focus on that feeling I get when people are more aligned with who they authentically are, I've always said, I've always said this phrase. I was like, if I could have an event where a hundred people showed up on day one, and on the last day, a hundred people went and quit their jobs. I'd be fired up. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. That'd be some, that'd be some crazy stuff because they'd be aware of all the inauthenticity in their life. So for me, if I become aware of a massive room of human beings who all found the clarity, the grace, the faith, and the courage to start doing what they were fucking born to do on this planet, mm. every single one of them. And then I go see those souls of a thousand people, 5,000 people. What happens when a husband who all of a sudden stops faking his whole freaking life and starts bringing his real, true, authentic self to his wife? What happens when he brings that to his kids? How does that affect his family? How does that affect his friends? How does that affect his company? How does that affect everything in his life? What happens when you put a more authentic, true, real soul on this planet? How far does that actually go? And when I begin to envision that, when I begin to feel in my body, how far that actually goes and more people are being who they are meant to be on this planet, 
not because of, of how society conditioned them, not because of mom and dad, not because of some freaking, you know, uh, some guru somewhere, some personal growth person who said, you should live life this way. Bullshit. People who are living the, their life the way they were designed and built to live it and impact the world, they were designed to impact it. I get attention to that. My energy goes to the roof. Mm. It's game over. And you can probably hear the difference in my tone. Exactly. I'm in your body, it right your body too. <laughs> like all of it. I'm in it because I'm, because I'm now totally aware to that. So ultimately with those three pieces, shift method and shift method and impact, all it is, is bringing those things into your awareness. And the more effective, the more specific you get with them over time, I want to be clear, do not try to force yourself to be specific. That doesn't work. Don't effort I yourself into being yeah. specific. Yeah, exactly. Energy is not, energy and effort are not in the same conversation. Mm. This is not something you effort yourself to do. This should be simple. It should be easy. It should be effortless. By fo following the feelings, there is no effort there. Okay, it's, it's simple. Yeah, that's true. And I'm, I'm going to give a real fast example so people can understand the differences good. here. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Is I did this, this particular work, whenever I'm working with anybody one-on-one -on -one, or even in a group, this is all I'm focused on. This is all I'm focused on is what is the shift? What is their method? And what's the greatest impact? That's it. I'm just focusing on how do I shift them in that space? And of course, for me, that, that also means how do I divorce their need from certainty from the past? How do I orient their need for certainty in their feelings, not in their, not in some physical event? Blah, blah, blah. But in doing this with people, I've had a whole bunch of different things. I've had one person who on the broad spectrum, I really wanted to go deep with them, but they just, their whole life, they hadn't really oriented towards purpose. They'd never done this before. It was like a whole new paradigm shift to think, oh my gosh, follow the feelings, move towards emotion, whatever. They had never thought that way. And so the deepest I could get, and it's okay. There's nothing wrong with it. Their answer when it came, what's the shift you want to create? He was like, ah, uh, I'm not a hundred percent sure. I just know that I want to, I want to create so much love and presence for people. And I said, why? And he said, just because I want to give people love and presence and show them that there is no reason to have to give love and presence. And when I was feeling into his space, feeling into his field, he felt good. He felt complete. He felt totally like warm with energy. He was awesome. He was doing great. That was as far as it went for him. I just want to go give love to people and presence just to show that you can give those things for no reason. Beautiful. Mm. There was another on the other end of the spectrum, somebody who had been doing this work for a long time, someone who had been moving themselves towards purpose for a very long time. And also another piece to this is they had a massive amount of pain. They had a massive amount of pain. Their life was so incongruent with their purpose at this point. They were willing to do anything. They were willing to divorce any idea, adopt any new process. Didn't matter. When someone's in enough pain, they're willing to make a massive change. That's just how it goes. This person was in a massive amount of pain. He was ready to make a massive change. And he also had some time in the personal growth space. So he was ready for it. In his call, this dude exploded with energy, claimed like this guy, he was crying. He was screaming. He was like, ah. It was awesome. And where he oriented himself was he connected that the purpose of his current journey right now is to completely 100% follow his heart, follow his pull, because he came from, he is 100% Chinese. And he was like, no, he had this download. He's like, no one in my entire family line has ever felt true, authentic, real happiness and fulfillment. Wow. My purpose is to create true happiness and fulfillment so I can heal the generational lines of 2000 plus years of oppression. That's what he said. Wow. It, I didn't, I didn't create this with Damn. him. I didn't put those in his, and all of a sudden and I was, and I was like, what happens in your life when you come from that and you'd be able to move forward? He was like, I, this, he, he started claiming all this stuff and he exploded. Okay. So why? And, and so, so I'm showing, uh, sharing that with your listeners for this reason, that if it's broad, it's okay. If it's specific, it's okay. Just know that the journey of this, what you have in store for you, if you begin to orient yourself towards energy and towards this future pull, okay, there are a few things you're going to have in your future that I want to just prep you for. Okay. One is none of your decisions are going to make any sense. All of your decisions. <laughs> Oh, that's yep. a fun one. <laughs> yeah. None of your decisions are going to make any sense. 
And if you try to describe why you're doing what you're doing to people who are like, why are you doing that? Why are you picking up your life and moving from California to North Carolina? Why are you divorcing your wife? Why are you leaving these people? Why aren't you talking to me anymore? Why are you, you, you can't describe it to them. It's not going to make any sense. Mm. Because what I found is if you try to pull metaphysical information, you try to pull it down into the physical, you try to explain it to somebody, it starts to drop its energy out. There are certain so things about what I do. True. Yeah. There are certain things that, that of what I do, Adrian, that I can't describe to you. I can't describe to your audience because there's, if I tried to, it would drop the energy out of it. So what you're hearing right now is, is here's the best physical description I can give you without dropping the energy out. Okay. So you're going to make a lot of decisions that don't make sense. That's number one. Two, you're going to become aware of how inauthentic your life is. Oof. And I'm going to share with you something. This is really freaking, this is real. This is the real shit. I'm not, I'm not, I'm going to use this language intentionally because I want your audience to listen. I'm not fucking around with this one. When you claim massive levels of energy from the universe, you become aware of how inauthentic your life has been. And you have mm. to have the stomach, the courage, the grace to be able to look at yourself and go, wow, I've been married for the last four years to someone I didn't love. And that's okay. Mm, I did it because grace. I was trying to, grace. because I was trying to prove it to somebody else. I was trying to create something. I'm the CEO of a company because a family member handed it off to me and I felt obligated, but really my heart has never been in it in the first place. And I have been faking the last seven years of my life and now I have to let it all go, come clean and decide to go on my own path. And I have to own it to that family member. And that's okay. Mm. I'm going to leave the home that my mom purchased for me in California to go travel to Austin, Texas. Even though she bought that house for me, even though she took care of all these things for me and she, she wanted me to live there forever, I'm going to throw, quote unquote, in her space, two middle fingers, because really, I didn't want to live there. I didn't want that space. I didn't want that place. And I have this gut feeling that it's possible that my future wife is going to be in Austin. I have to make the move. That's a real story, by the way, um, from a client I worked with. Doesn't make any sense. And that's okay. When you become aware of the inauthenticity of your life, of how you're previously living it, this is, real, this is, this is the truth. The thing that separates the world from people who end up walking on their purpose and those who just go and become pattern driven robots the rest of their life, who be who just live their lives, just totally on autopilot. The difference is that defining experience. Can you give yourself grace for your inauthentic way of being and have the courage to move towards authenticity wow. or not? Like, wow. have you ever had that moment, Adrian, where you looked at like adults and people and you've been like, how are are you just on autopilot the whole time? All the time, <laughs> all yeah. the time. Yeah, the answer is yes, they are. Because in that defining moment where at their life, they had those feelings, they had that orientation towards purpose. When they had that, unfortunately, not because they're not weak, not because they're bad people, it's just they didn't have the right information or whatever, they didn't have this podcast, whatever it is, okay? Um, they didn't have the courage to look at themselves with grace. And they didn't have the courage to make decisions that didn't make sense. They just stayed in a way that the world wanted them to be. One of the number one things that uh, people on their deathbed say is the number one regret is I wish I would have lived the life that I was supposed to live rather than live the life that everyone else wanted me to lead. Mm. God, this one of the number one things that people say on their deathbed. Okay. So trust me, that is the defining moment. So the first thing you're going to make decisions that don't make sense to, you're going to be aware of how inauthentic your life is. I'm just telling you. Okay. This is good for people to know, though. For the, the, yeah, like, so, so when these things come up, they're like, they're like, oh, this is, this is, this means I'm on the right path. Like they don't get freaked out to the point where they run away from it, right? So totally. this is good. Totally. Forward. What was the third thing you were going on? The third thing is that you're going to begin to claim more energy and purpose than you've ever imagined in your entire life. You will God. have more transformation than you've ever had ever. So I'll, I'll end with this little story and then you can, we can, we can close it how you want to do it. I was, like I mentioned before, I was in the personal growth space for about seven and a half, eight years. 
and I was making, we'll call it marginal progress at best. Okay. I was having legitimate breakthroughs. I was crying here or there. I was like, oh my gosh, my parents, I, uh, I didn't realize I was blaming my parents for everything. I didn't realize that I was being not wealthy because of my conditioning and all this kind of stuff. Okay. That was happening just like it, all good things, but my life wasn't actually changing that much. The year that I met the woman that I'm with now, that I began to orient myself and, and at the same time, the year that I began to listen to my feelings and take actions that made no effing sense in one year of time, I became more of a man. I became, I changed more, transformed more, became more in one year of following the feelings, orienting myself towards purpose than I had in eight years, dropping hundreds of thousands of dollars. <laughs> Oh yeah. Tons of hours, all that stuff. The answer is not in the gurus. The answer is not in the events. The answer is not in the programs, in the coaches and all that stuff. The answer is inside of you and your ability to take action towards where you're meant to go. That's it. Mm, that actually is a, well, I feel like you kind of just did it, but let me, let me, at, let me just give you this final question. If you were to put this entire conversation into one to two sentences that you want to be tattooed in the souls of the people who are listening to this show right now, what would that be? Oh, yeah, yeah, go ahead. What would that be? Follow the feelings. That'd be the only thing that I would say is follow the feelings. If it feels great, if it feels euphoric, if it feels exciting, do it. If you feel your energy drop, if you feel sad, if you feel depressed, if you start focusing on certainty, scarcity, don't do that thing. Stop doing that thing. Follow the feelings. Mic drop right there. And the final, final question is, where can these people, because I'm pretty sure some people are going to want to like stalk you after this and dive into your stuff. Where's the best place for them to um, connect with you uh, and follow your work? Yeah, best place to connect with me is going to be on Instagram. Right now I'm doing a real series called Downloads for Difference Makers, where I'm just, anytime that I get a download in my journey, because I'm, 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 by the way, I don't, these things I'm speaking on, I'm not just like saying some cool shit that sounds cool. I'm doing this every day. And as a result, you're living, when you're, yeah. yeah, when you're claiming energy and you're correcting misalignments, shit comes in. <laughs> so rather than me just keep all that to myself, I, I made a real series where I just go in and I just start to say downloads for difference makers. And if I have a download, I share it, I put it into a reel and I release it. So the way that you can get more connected with this kind of content, what I talk about is my Instagram, which is just Muliger, which is my last name spelled M U E L L E G G E R. And it's not released yet. It's not up yet, but there will be soon a website, which is just alanmuelger.com, which is A-L-A-N-M-U-E-L-L-E-G-G-E-R.com. In there is where you can book calls with me to ask more questions about what I do, whether it's Perfect. speaking engagements, one-on-one, doesn't matter. Um, that, you can go to that website and get that information too.